Hi, everyone. Welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to be exploring another one-inch wool applique circle. I'm using these circles as the testing ground for my new project, which will feature, I think, at this point, 24 one-inch circles. So I've been playing around with different stitches and the idea of using a stitch that one wouldn't normally think of using to either fill in a circle or use on the outer edge of a circle. The last circle I did featured the ladder stitch, which I used on the outer edge, and it was challenging to be sure, but it also ended up giving a really interesting look. So that is exciting to me. So I, I'm going to continue doing that. I haven't figured out which stitch I'm going to use for today's circle, but I'm going to keep challenging myself by choosing stitches that are a little different and maybe doing different things to them combining them. So one of the things I've been doing is doing a double threaded around the Basque stitch. I did it around the rosette chain to really, I think, good effect. And I find that exciting. I'm going to keep doing that and see where it takes me. I hope you'll join me. Don't forget to hit the like button subscribe, click on the bell for email notifications. I love hearing from you. Leave me comments and check out the description section where I leave links for all the different things, stitches and tools that I use within this video. If you haven't done so yet, I would love for you to join me on my blog. I blog Tuesdays and Thursdays at Where Art and Life Meet. I'm also on Instagram at and my name, Ariane Zersher. Grab something to stitch with grab a needle and some thread, and let's explore the creative process and the stitches that we can use thinking out of the box. This is my next circle, and these are the colors I've pulled for it. Uh, I'm thinking a Pekini stitch going around. So I start with a back stitch, and I'm going to do that in my EZM14 and number five weight. I've got it on an 18 chenille needle. I'm going to do my back stitch. So there's my back stitch. This is a number five EZM 19. For the Pekinis, I always have to think for a second because there's one part of the stitch that goes from one stitch to the next, and the other part goes across two. And I want that bigger loop to be on the outside, not on the inside. So in order for that to be the case, I have to have my applique above me and I have to put my needle through above the first stitch. I then make sure that the thread is underneath. I then come up on the next stitch and go back down into this stitch that I that my thread emerged from. And I have to make sure that this loop is underneath so it does that. Then I go into the next stitch and I come back down in the stitch in back of me. Go up into the next one, go back down, 
I did a, a video on the Pekingese, and if you want to see it in a lot of different threads, go to that video. I'll post the, the link in the upper right-hand corner. little circle in here because I'm going to do an open buttonhole filler stitch in the round. The open buttonhole filler stitch, when you do it in the round, you do the back stitch around your circle. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to keep it fairly small because I want this to be pretty dense. All right, so when I start my first, I'm going to come over like this. I'm going to have this circle sort of loop around. I'm going to go through this first stitch. It's going to be just like that. Going from the top down, and I'm just going to go around like this, around and around. So now I'm going to start my next rung and I just go into the loop that's been made. And I start to decrease as my circle gets smaller. of whipped woven. I'm using Wild Blue Yonder Aurora on a number one Milner's and I'm going to do a series of bullion knots. Sometimes with a thread like the Aurora, or if I'm doing a lot of wraps, I really need these pliers. They really make life easier. Um, people are always asking about these. So I've got a link. They're Lindstrom. If you go to the link, you it takes you directly to this exact pair. If you look inside, there are no teeth. It's smooth. These are actually jeweler's pliers. They're for using with 18 karat, 20 karat, 22 karat gold, which is m very soft. And so you need a something that's not going to damage the wire. So these do not damage your needles. Needles are much, much stronger than 
18 karat gold wire. My idea here is that I do a fly stitch and I come in right at the edge of the circle, pull this through and go right into the center here. Okay, I'm gonna do a little dazzle. If this is fireworks, it's a, um, a metallic and I'm gonna put it right in the middle and maybe I'm gonna whip stitch this, I don't know. You know, I'm not loving it, but I'm not hating it. So I'm just going to leave it alone and, um, you know, maybe I'll feel better tomorrow. Of course, now I'm thinking, oh, well, it really just needs to have this on the outside. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm going to leave it for now. If I hate it tomorrow, I'll pull it out. Yeah, this is going to keep me up at night. All right, I'm back to this one. I've taken out a lot of stuff, so I'm going to do a chain stitch right on the edge of this open buttonhole filler circle that I did in the round. I'm using a number 8 EZM26 and size 24 chenille. I'm coming right up to the edge here of the circle. I'm going to try to help how lopsided this circle is. I'm going to try to fudge it so that the chain kind of masks how wonky it is. So it's already, look how much better that's looking. Ugh, that circle was really bothering me. I didn't even realize how much until I'm seeing it now. All right, so I'm anchoring my thread down. I was thinking of doing a center bead here, right there. Or I could do this kind of bone bead that I have. It's much bigger, and I'm not sure it really works because it's kind of not in keeping with the rest of the piece. Then I was thinking I would put a little bead right here in between each of these segments but now I'm wondering if that even needs to happen. This is what I do. I set stuff up and I look at it and I see what I think and then I take stuff away or I just try stuff like I you know you've watched me. Try stuff, take it out, try other stuff, take that out and then I do this one in the center. All right you're gonna laugh but I don't like this. I'm gonna take it out. This has been a, a bit of a struggle as you have probably seen and I have probably taken out as much as I've put in and whenever I'm struggling and trying to like add a lot of stuff it usually says that I'm not liking whatever is happening. Sometimes no. Sometimes it just you know it sort of organically takes place and you just keep adding stuff and, it, and then I, and I'm happy. But in this case I've never felt really like oh I really like that. So I keep adding stuff hoping I'm going to like it and then I don't and you know and that's when I start thinking I need to take away better <laughs> so now maybe I could do the beads around and I wouldn't mind it so much and then the center bead I'll try that I can always take it out that's like my motto I can always take it out I'm gonna put one in here I'm gonna put that bead right there and I'm not doing a beaded chain obviously I'm just gonna put these beads I'm placing them sort of strategically in between these bullions. I've got this one and then one more and then I decide about the center all right so there it is without the center and then here it is with the center see how the color of the background just changed putting the white paper down and that's actually truer to the color. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing this back and forth, up and down process. It just is what it is sometimes. I'm looking at it and thinking, mm, <laughs> I need to move on. So off I go. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click on the bell for email notifications, and leave me comments. I love hearing from you. Don't forget to check out the description section. It's where I'm going to leave the links for all the different threads I've used in this video. Until next time, here's to exploring together.